This is the notes video for section 7.4, slide number 28. All right, so uh, it says the graph of a differentiable function f on the closed interval 1 to 7 is shown above. So this is a graph of f. All right, now it says let h of x equal the definite integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. All right, <clears throat> so now a says find h of 1. All right, so h of 1. So this is a function notation question to start. h of x is the integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. So h of 1 would be the integral from 1 to 1, right? x is 1 for, of f of t dt. So this is a graph of f. So what is the integral from 1 to 1 of f of t dt? Well, of course, that's 0, right? That's pretty easy, all right? Now, what if it wasn't 1? What if it was like 2? What would the integral from 1 to 2 be asking? Well, that would be asking you to find the area under the curve from 1 to 2, okay? All right, what about h prime of 4? All right, so remember, we are told that h of x is the definite integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. And so, remember, we're going to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus if I want to find h prime of x. All right, so what does h prime tell us? How do we find the derivative of this? Remember, we take x and put it in place of t, right? And then multiply by the derivative of x. So it would be f of x times the derivative of x, which is 1. So, really, all we're being told here is that h prime of x is equal to f of x. In other words, this is a graph of f but it's actually also a graph of h prime, okay? So h prime of four, well, this is a graph of h prime. So that means I wanna know the y value on this graph when x is four. So h prime of four is, well, look at the y value, it's two, right? So a is zero, b is two. All right, what about c? All right, on what interval or intervals is the graph of h concave upward? Justify your answer. All right, so this is a unit four question that shows up in a unit seven question. All right, so here's, sorry, here's a, here's b. All right, so c, concave up. What does concave up mean? So we have to do a little bit of remembering from unit four. Concave up means what? That the second derivative well, second derivative of what, though? It says, on what interval is h concave up? Now, we are not looking at a graph of h, so it's not like you're looking at this curve and saying, oh, it's concave down, concave up. No. Okay, we are looking at a graph of h prime, right, which is a graph of f. So it says, on what interval is the graph of h concave up? So h concave up means h double prime is greater than zero, right? Okay, so now we're not looking at a graph of h double prime. We're looking at a graph of h prime. So how would I know when h double prime is greater than zero? All right, so h double prime is greater than zero means what? That h prime is increasing, right? What does that mean? The slope of h prime is positive. So I'm going to write that again. Slope of h prime is positive, right? So remember, h double prime positive means the slope of h prime is positive, which means h prime is increasing. So now look at this picture. When is this graph, remember this graph is h prime, so when is this graph increasing? Well, that's a pretty easy question. It is increasing from 1 to 3, okay? So 1 to 3, and then it is increasing from 6 to 7. So that's our answer. Okay, now it says on what intervals is h concave upward, right? Well, we said 1 to 3, 6 to 7, but justify your answer. Well, have we provided justification? We've said concave up is when h double prime is greater than 0, and h double prime is greater than 0 is when h prime is increasing or when the slope of h prime is positive, which means from 1 to 3 and 6 to 7. So that is our justification. The meaning behind that is our justification, all right? So that's C. All right, and then D, find the value of x at which h has its minimum on the closed interval 1 to 7. All right, so this is kind of an interesting question, okay? When could a minimum occur, right, on a closed interval? Well, we're kind of using the critical number test, 
right? So critical number test. All right, critical number test. So we consider endpoints, right? And then we consider uh, the other critical numbers. Remember, that's where the derivative or h prime is equal to zero or undefined. So write yourself a note, critical number test. When is h prime equal to zero or undefined? Okay, now you remember that this is a graph of h prime. So first of all, when is h prime equal to zero? Well, that would be at five. So x equals five. All right, and then when is it undefined? Well, at the endpoints, one and seven, right? All right, so, okay, critical number test. We want to evaluate h of one, okay, which we already did in part a, that's zero, okay, that's easy. All right, what about h of five? Okay, so now let's think, what is h of five? That would be the integral from one to five of f of t dt, right? All right, so take a look at this. Now, what is the integral from 1 to 5? That represents this area, right? That represents that area. So now, is that area a positive value or a negative value? Okay, that is a positive value. Now, we can't actually find its value because we don't have whatever that function happens to be, but we know that h of 5 is greater than 0. Yes, okay. Now, what about h of seven okay so h of seven what is h of seven all right so h of seven would be the integral from one to seven of f of t dt all right so now take a look at that h of seven all right so h of seven would be this area minus this area remember minus because this is below the x-axis so you can say that the area from 1 to 5 is greater than the area from 6 to 7, so you know that h of 7 is still a positive value, but it is less than h of 5. Do you agree? So you can say h of 5 is greater than h of 7. Is that true? Yes, because you would be subtracting the area from 5 to 7. All right, now what about h of 1? Which one of these is greater? Well, you know that h of 5 and h of 7 are both positive numbers, and h of 1 is 0. So find the value of x at which h has its minimum on the closed interval 1 to 7. Well, what can we say? We can say the minimum of h occurs at x equals 1. Why? Because h of 5 is greater than 0, and h of 7 is greater than 0, and h of 1 is equal to 0. Clearly, h of 5 and h of 7 are greater than h of 1. So, this is a true AP free response question. All right, and there are uh, three problems in our homework, I believe, that are also true free response questions.